Yogi Yogis. Um, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, today we are going to be doing a dynamic power flow. So there's going to be a lot of balance in today's class, which I'm a little bit nervous about because I'm feeling quite lethargic today. My energy levels are quite low and um, had a really busy week of work, which means a lot of the time a balance and um, you need so much focus and so much um, presence and connection to your breath to have a steady balance. Um, so I might be a little bit wobbly on my feet um, and I actually know the sequence. So if you're really wobbly, don't worry about it. Please try not to judge yourself too much. Have fun with your practice. And if you wobble, if you think that that's failing, just remember that there's not really such thing as failing. And um, when you're learning from it, when you are strengthening from it, every time you fall out of a pose, you're creating muscle memory to get straight back in and allow your body to strengthen every time it progress. So, um, like I said, it's going to be a dynamic flow. So there's going to be a lot um, of transitions, a lot of poses. We're going to be incorporating a lot of them being quite challenging, requiring a lot of flexibility and strength. And um, there are some of the poses that I'm not even... Um, fully developed in but again that's my favorite thing about yoga is that it's a lifelong journey so try to have fun with today's class uh, we're going to be doing a sequence and then repeating the sequence again so that we can modify and advance to um, other progressions in the poses so before we get started just to let you know that you might need two blocks and um, you will definitely need a mat unless you are, uh, got, you've got an amazing grippy floor. Um, I am wearing today my Sweaty Betty um, gear, so I'm wearing this amazing red crop um, and these power leggings which are super comfy and stretchy and have nice little side pockets and zip pockets at the back. Um, I'm a massive fan of Sweaty Betty and I have been for years. So I've actually just been running some online, so if you want to look like this, then I'll include a link in the box below and um, so that you can shop the look and the mat and the blocks. Okay, let's get started. Come to a supported child pose. So bring your knees together, your inner ankles touching, sit your bum back toward your heels. And extend your arms back by your ankles, resting your forehead either on the mat or on a block. So we're going to just begin our practice in stillness. So like I said, a lot of balance in today's class, which means we want to really begin to focus into um, how we're feeling. Like I said, checking in with your energy level, just to acknowledge that before you force your way or push your way through your practice. Remembering that this pose is always available for you. So if you ever need a child's pose throughout class and I'm continuing with the flow, this is the amazing thing about YouTube is that you can press pause and you can take a break and come back or you can just continue to let it flow like a regular class. Take a break, leave things out, add things in. I'm not here to expect anything from you. I'm not here to judge simply here to offer a flow. So just begin to connect in with your breath, starting to deepen the inhale and exhale through the nose. So since the front of our body is a little bit restricted resting on our thighs, just starting to breathe into your back body. Allow the inhale to lengthen. With the bottom of the exhale, just really contracting the ribcage in, maybe hugging your belly slightly in toward your lower back, and squeezing this tail air out. Listening to the sound of your breath, and just acknowledging, even just after a few seconds of watching your breath and focusing on your breath, that the rest of your day is starting to become a little bit foggier, starting to melt away as you begin to bring your full focus to the space on your mat and your body. And let's get real. That's the reason we come to our mat, is to recreate that sense of presence and connection to ourselves. So remember that as we move through the challenging poses of class. Remember, it's not all about the physical. 
You made it to your mat and that's the best, hardest part of all class. We're going to start to move with our breath. We're going to stand on our knees with hips over knees and arms overhead. So as you inhale, you're going to lift your hips, lift your arms out wide. Stack your hips over your knees and your shoulders over your hips, arms up overhead. Exhale, start to move back into that supported child's pose. Arms back, hips back, forehead to the mat. If you need extra cushion for the knees, find a blanket or double over the mat. Again, inhale, arms lift. Come on to the knees, hips over knees, shoulders over hips. Exhale, shift back, fold, arms back. Three more, inhale, lift up, use your core strength. Shoulders over hips, arms lift, tuck the tailbone slightly. Exhale, hips back, fold. Two more, inhale, arms lift. Exhale, fold it back, arms back, forehead down. Last time we're going to be doing this. We're going to be trying to move at your own pace. Inhale, try to sink your movement with your breath. At the peak of your inhale, arms come to the maximum height. And the same as you exhale, start to move really slowly so that the exhale finishes just as you bring the hands back and forehead to the mat. Now circle the arms out wide, sweep the arms all the way forward toward the front of your mat. Spread your fingers wide. I'm just gonna move back a little bit here on my mat. Spread your fingers wide, plant your palms, and lift your forearms so arms are active. And just walk your knees slightly wider so there's a little gap between your knees. And we're gonna come up into our cow tilt, so arching our spine, a little back bend. Push down into the hands, draw the body forward, inhale, arch into your cow belly. Shoulders back, chest forward. Exhale, round it back into that child's pose. Hips back, forehead to mat. Four more like that. Inhale, arch it forward. Shoulders away from ears. Rib cage down, chest through. Exhale, round it all the way back. Hips back, forehead to mat. Move at your own pace as always. Inhale, forward. Shoulders away from ears. Collarbones broad. Exhale, round into the back, tuck the tailbone, shift it back nice and slow with the breath. Two more times, inhale, spread your fingers wide, pull your chest through, arch your spine, compress your middle back. Exhale, find space between the vertebrae as you round it all the way back to child's pose. Last time, inhale, come forward. As if you are pulling your chest through, creating that traction with the mat. Exhale, round it back, child's pose, last time. Down dog, so you can come forward into your tabletop. If you need to check in, spread your fingers wide and space between each finger and really grounding through all ten knuckles of fingers and hands. Tucking your toes and lifting your hips up and back into your first downward facing dog. So setting up your feet about hip width, that's about two fists between the arches of your feet. Your heels are hidden behind your toes. Wrap your triceps in to find space across your upper back. And remember, there's no right or wrong in your practice. There's no perfect pose. So your down dog might look very different to mine. You have, might have much straighter legs. You might have um, the ankle mobility to get the heels all the way down to the mat, whereas I'm a little bit more restricted in my hamstrings. So my heels a lot of the time tend to hover. Most importantly is that you just get length in the spine. So if you need to bend your knees a lot in order to do that, please do. Okay. So from here we're going to begin to walk our feet toward the front edge of our mat, nice and slow. Inhale. Once you get there, hands to shins, chest forward, lengthen your spine, arch your tadasana. Exhale, hinge and fold from your hip creases as you fold, sink forward and down. Float to standing, maybe a little bend in your knees as you float up tall, arms overhead. Exhale, hands raised to prayer at the heart, tuck the tailbone, lift the lower belly up and in. Okay, so we're just going to move through one and a half sun salutations. So from here, feet can be together or hip width. Inhale, float arms up. Lengthen up tall. Exhale, hinge, fold weight forward in the toes as you shift forward and down. Inhale, flat back. Arda Uttanasana, chest through. Exhale, plant your palms, step it back into plank. Nice and slow as we 
to speed up the body. Inhale in your plank, exhale, shift forward slightly as you lower either halfway to chaturanga or all the way to the belly. Inhale, up to our cobra, tuck the feet to mat, engage your quads, whether your knees are lifted or not, and exhale, downward facing dog, tuck the toes, lift the hips, down dog. Wrap your triceps in, lift your sit bones up and back, broaden into the upper back, lift the kneecaps, engage the quads. Okay, and then from there again, we're going to step, hop, walk, whatever it is, to the front of your mat, inhale, flat back the length and out of your waist again. Exhale, hinge, fold from your hip creases over your thighs. Strong legs, inhale, flow up, root down through the feet as you rise up tall, hands release to prayer at the heart. And again, inhale, lift the arms all the way up, lengthen out your waist, reach up tall, exhale, fold. You can move at your own pace if I'm moving too fast or slow for your breath. Inhale, lengthen, shoulders back, chest forward. Plant the palms, you can step back or you can hop back into your chaturanga. Elbows hug your ribcage. Inhale, lift into cobra or up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Lift your hips up and back. Okay, really nice. So from here we're going to move into our standing sequence. Like I said, first time might be a little bit confusing. A lot to take in. Don't worry if you lose your balance, if you fall out of any of the poses or feel restricted. Very normal first round. We're going to start by right through the left leg. I'm going to get you to step the right foot slightly in towards center and float your left leg all the way up toward the sky. Inhale. Exhale, you're going to bring the left knee into the right tricep. Bring it across your body, shoulders forward over the wrist, round to your spine. Inhale, float it all the way up toward the sky. Exhale, left knee to nose, hug the thigh and shoulders forward again with the wrists. Cross your left knee over your right leg and eagle wrap on us. And then shift back like you're coming into down dog. Lift your hips, allow your right heel to soften down. Okay, keep your right knee as bent as you need. You're squeezing your left thigh into your right. You can point the left toe to be active here. Lift your lower belly up and in. Engage your pelvic floor. Now from here, you're going to pivot your right heel to the left. Bending into your right knee. And just push your hips slightly back a little bit. You can come onto the tips of your right fingers as you push back, squeeze your thighs together through the outer edge of your right foot. And then you can shoot forward into your fall and start. So you're going to bring your left wrist or your left shoulder over your left wrist, extend your left leg out wide and lift your right arm. So engage your side body, wrap your left bicep forward, lift through the obliques, strong legs. And then right hand down, you're going to cross the left thigh over the right again. Coming back into that modified down dog. So we're going to create a figure four shape with our legs now. So what you're going to do is you're going to slide your left ankle so that it's over your right thigh now. Flex your left foot like you're coming into um, your pigeon pose with the left leg. Now bend your right knee, allow your right heel to lift. And begin to walk your hands toward the back of your mat. Okay, so if the left leg is not in this figure four shape, just feel free to adjust. We're going to stay low for a second, just keep your fingertips on the mat. Okay, and then we're going to come up into Galavasana, our balancing pose. So one leg chair, bring your hands to prayer and slowly start to lift up. Thumbs to the center of your chest, flex your left foot so that you're feeling this in the left hip. Soften your shoulders, find your breath. Breathing deeply, use the core strength, use the pelvic floor, keep your drishti point focused. Breathe to connect with your body. Slowly come to standing, bring the left knee to your chest. Bring your right hand to the outside of your left knee, left arm back. So coming into this twisted balance, right leg fully active, keep your drishti point focused. And then arms come up overhead as you square your shoulders to the front of your mat, come back to center. Keep your right arm where it is, bring your left hand to the inside of the left knee, and bring that left knee out wide so you're opening the hip. Lift up through the lower belly, allow your ribcage to soften down and in. And then slowly bring 
bring the left knee back to center. Bring the nice, bring the arms overhead. And fold into your standing splits. So you're going to sweep the left leg back, bring your hands all the way down to the mat. Nice and slow. Now, for your standing splits, again, like I said, I'm going to restrict to my hamstrings. So I like to play around with standing splits. Maybe you pulse bending your right knee and straightening it. Maybe you feel better lifting the left knee or straightening the left leg. Just allow weight to shift forward over your right leg. You can even bring your right hand behind the right and calf or ankle if that feels good. Fold for three, two, one. Bring your fingertips to the mat. Hug your left knee in towards your nose. Round through your spine. Push the mat away. Bend your right knee. Look forward. Step the left foot through for pyramid fold. So bringing your hands either side of the left foot, drop your right heel. So here again, if you're like me and have restriction in your hamstring flexibility, you can bring blocks underneath the hands if that feels good for you. Okay? So if you're rounding through the back a lot, it could help you if you brought um, blocks underneath the hands like I'm demonstrating now. Much more important to do this and lengthen your spine rather than have your hands on the mat and round through the back. As well, I want you to focus on squaring off your hips. So try to hug that left hip back, right hip forward. Hug your lower belly in toward your spine. And rather than thinking about getting your forehead to your shin, rather than think about getting your lower belly to touch your upper thigh. Really nice. Inhale, flat back leg. Then we're going to come into Arlington and Brass and a Half Moon. So let you to bend into your left leg. You're going to bring your left hand forward, wider than your left foot. You can use a block if you need. Right hand to right hip and start to lean the weight forward into the left leg as you float the right leg. Okay, so I find it easiest if I flex my right foot and I point the right toe in the direction of my chest. So the right toe is pointing to the right. It's going to help you externally rotate the hip and stack that right hip over the left. You can keep the right hand to the hip or you can extend the right arm toward the sky. Energy through the right leg. The more you engage it, the lighter it will feel. Knit your rib cage in, lengthen your spine. And then whatever you do, bend your left knee, step the right foot to the back of your mat. So if you need to adjust the position of your feet, maybe you need to widen the stance of the feet. And then windmill up and open. So shoulders are going to be over the hips. Left heel in line with arch of right foot. Arms wide, shoulders soft. Lift the lower belly up and in to support the lower back. Feel the arch of your feet lift away from your mat as you ground through the outer edges of the feet. Inhale, through the left arm, exhale, reverse. Right hand can find your right thigh or right calf. Left arm is going to extend up and over. This should feel really nice. You stay lunging in the left knee, visualize it over the left ankle. And you shouldn't feel this in your lower back, only in your side body, in your hips. Come all the way back up, inhale, warrior two, exhale. Straighten your left leg and tilt the back foot in. Inhale here for Trikonasana. Exhale, right hip back, left arm forward and down. Either to shin, ankle, mass, inside or outside of foot, or to a block. Right arm lifts up directly away from the left. Try to activate your left quad to support the back of the left knee. You're trying to think of space between left hip crease and left armpit. So rather than collapsing into your side body, think of length. So length and left armpit forward. Really nice. Come all the way back up. Use your core and your leg strength. Stack your shoulders over your hips. Wide leg forward fold. Bring your toes to point forward and feet parallel or pigeon toes. I like to point the toes a little bit in toward each other. Makes me feel like I have a better grip and stronger through the grip to the mat. So from here, we're gonna bring our arms out wide. Inhale, lift up, strengthen your quad. Exhale, really think of extending forward. So I want you to think about chin forward, 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 arms out wide, feeling the muscles of your back engage, your core engage, and then you can find your grip. So you can bring your hands to your calves, your ankles, your feet. If none of that feels good and you need more support, you can always bring your hands to the mat. Lift up through your pelvic floor. Engage your quads. And feel with each inhale that sense of length through the spine. 
with each exhale a little bit more weight forward in the toes as you fold. Rather than thinking about rounding into it, try to think about reaching your chin down toward the mat. It's going to help you create a sense of length through your spine. Lift your kneecaps again, engage your quads. And then inhale, flat back, hands to the mat. Lengthen forward and walk your hands to the front edge of your mat. Coming into a runner's lunge, pivot onto the ball of the back foot. Push into the hands and step back into the plank. Inhale in your plank, chest forward. Exhale, lower with control, elbows graze your ribs. Inhale, up dog or cover, tops of feet to mat, shoulders away from you. Exhale, down dog. Okay, so I'm just going to take a moment. Now that we've practiced, and the first round on the left right side, so there's a little bit of a mix of both left and right there, and we're going to do the same sequence on the opposite side. And now that you know it a little bit more, the bones will come a lot easier because you're not thinking so much about um, the sequence and what comes next. So, fingers crossed, we feel a little bit more comfortable, and really important that you move with your breath. Okay, let's get back to it. So meeting in a downward facing dog, feet hip width, hands shoulder width, spread the fingers wide, feel that sense of being grounded through hands and feet. We're going to start by putting the right leg, so step your left foot slightly in towards center. Bring the right leg all the way up, inhale, exhale to the opposite tricep. So left tricep, hug it across the body, shoulders round forward over the wrists. Inhale, lift it all the way back up, three legged dog. Exhale, knee to nose, squeeze the thigh in towards your belly, scoop your belly in, and then cross your right thigh over your left. So right knee over left. Lift your hips up and back like you're lifting up into down dog. Stay really strong through the arms here. So keep your triceps wrapping in, biceps forward, feeling your shoulders working. And then you're going to pivot your left heel to the right, and you can bend into the left knee. Now you want to keep the energy back, pushing back. You can come light on your left fingertips. Okay, really try to feel into your side body. And then we're going to shoot forward into our fallen star. So I'm going to get you to bring your left arm up. And then you're going to reach your right leg out. Shoot your right shoulder forward over your right wrist. Knife edge of your right foot to the mat. And feeling your obliques working here. Your side body working. Both legs really active and strong. And then left hand down, cross the right side back over the left, spin off the ball of the bend, back foot. And then down there we're going to make that figure four shape. So you slide, instead of crossing right thigh over left, you're now crossing right ankle over left leg. Flex the right foot, bend your left knee, and then walk your hands back toward your whoo, left foot. Okay, so drop your left heel down to the mat, stay on the fingers. Make sure you have that figure four shape with the legs. So don't worry if it's not perfect, but just important that you're flexing the right foot with time and flexibility in the hips. You'll feel a little bit more comfortable here. Slowly hands to prayer, slowly float to that one leg chair, Balavasana. Sit your bum back and down. Flex the right foot so you're really feeling it in the right glute and the right hip. Sit back with the chest, soften the shoulders. Breathe through. Deep in the inhale and exhale. Two. And slowly come all the way up, right knee to chest, twist. Bring the left hand to the outside of the right knee, right arm back. Keep your drishti point fixed. Lift up through the lower belly, right thumb toward the sky. You can either point or flex the right foot, whatever feels like it gives you a little bit more control. Arms over the head, back to center, square hips and shoulders. Exhale, right hand to the inside of the right knee and bring the right knee out wide. Using your right glute, using the strength of your right hip, again, either point or flex the right toe. Bring it back to center, arms overhead, inhale, exhale, standing splits. So right leg is going to extend back, you're going to fold forward over the left leg. Again, you want to uh, forget about the perfect standing split pose. Some of you will have a beautiful straight right leg overhead. Some of you might be all the way down here like me. I have quite a weak standing split. It's something that I'm trying to work on, but of course the things you feel uncomfortable in, you avoid, unlike the rest of you. Okay, so from here, we're going to come to our fingertips. We're going to hug our right knee 
pointing toward our nose, bend your left knee, scoop your belly in around your spine, and then look forward, step the right foot through for pyramid fold. So ground your left heel, square off the hips, find blocks if you need to bring them back toward you, and then find length as you fold. So this is one of those poses I've taken years to form a good relationship with. So in the beginning, I used to really struggle with this pose, especially for somebody who has forever tight hamstrings. So it's something about squaring off the hips. It's something about really connecting with that plugging in sensation, that drawing in towards center between your inner thighs. But now I really feel like I get to connect with where I am in the pose rather than where I want to be. Pull your lower belly in, root down to the left heel, and then inhale, lengthen, stretch forward. So slowly lengthening, we're going to come into our artist and grass now, or half moon. You're going to bend into the right knee, shift the weight forward, extend your right arm forward, and wider out your right foot. The closer it is to the right foot, the less of a base you're going to have. So slowly bring your left hand to your left hip, open the left hip over the right. So external rotation in the hip here, you'll begin to feel that more once you flex your left foot and point the left toes out to the left. Really strong for your standing leg, that doesn't mean you have to be straight, you can be bent if you need. And again, feel free to prop your right hand up on a block. Chest long, forward, spine straight, and then warrior two. Bend into your right knee, step the left to the back of your neck. Again, you, widen, you can widen the stance of your feet here. Arms out wide, heel to arch alignment. Notice that the hips should be over the, um, or sorry, the shoulders should be over the hips. It's never forward or back. Okay, you'll notice where the weight of your body is if you're leaning one way or the other. So with your right hand, inhale, exhale, reverse your warrior. Really enjoying that side body stretch, keeping this feeling in your side body rather than, rather than your lower back. Draw your shoulders away from your ears, draw the tailbone down toward the mat. And then float it up, use your core warrior to inhale, straighten the right leg, exhale, trippanasana, right arm forward and down. If you need to shorten the distance between your feet, I often do when I'm feeling a little bit less steady. Right hand can be anywhere that makes you feel comfortable. That can be on the hand, just below the knee. You can be to the ankle, to a block, or to the mass. If you tend to hyperextend in your joints, please do feel free to micro-bend your right knee. Slowly come all the way back up. Inhale, shoulders over hips, straighten into your legs, and bring both toes to point the long, toward the long edge of your mat, or wide leg forward folds. Hips forward, inhale, lengthen your spine. Exhale, hinge, fold forward. So weight forward in your toes, extend your chin forward, lifting your arms, feeling your upper back working for you. And as you shift weight forward, engage your quads. Now again, your hands can come to grip the backs of your calves, the backs of your ankles. You can bring pinky fingers to big toes if you like. Or you can just bring your hands onto the mat if that's what works best for you. Again, trying to breathe length into your spine as you inhale, exhale, hinge and fold it forward. Hi. Okay, so trying to get the crown of the head down, trying to lift your sit bones toward the sky. And remember, straight legs is always not best legs, so if you need to bend your knees, bend your knees. Remember, there's no right or wrong. And then inhale, lengthen your spine, fingertips to mat, chest forward. Walk your hands to the front edge of your mat, plant your palms in runner's lunge and step back into plank. Inhale, plank, exhale, lower with control. Inhale, up dog or cobra, contract your quads, lift your lower belly up and in. Exhale, downward facing dog, tilt the toes, lift the hips. Okay, so as I explain, you can take a break if you want. Um, we're going to repeat that. Two more, on each, two more times on each side. And each time we do it, we're going to incorporate something new or a little bit of a different variation. That sequence that we just did is the foundation, and that is perhaps for some of you the level that you're going to stay at. So in my classes, I love to be able to incorporate different levels into the same class because it's 
really important to get to and um, be comfortable in modifying a class to suit you. It's not always going to be available if there's going to be a beginner's or an intermediate level at the time that you are um, available to go to class. So I think it's important to be able to get comfortable in modifying a pose or listening to your body and rather than thinking about what everyone else is doing or worrying about what they're thinking about you, connecting with yourself and remembering what's really important, which is accepting where you are in your practice and moving from there. That's where you're strongest. Yeah. How do I end up walking so much during class? I hope you were enjoying a nice child's pose or something there. Um, feel free in future to support or fast forward over those waffle marks. So, downward facing dog, tuck the toes a little bit. Step your right foot slightly in towards the edge. We're going to move a little bit faster this time. Float the left leg all the way up. Inhale. Exhale, left knee to right tricep. Hook it across. Inhale, float it all the way back up. Three legged dog. Exhale, the knee to nose. Round to your spine, shoulders over wrists. Cross your left leg over your right. Lift your hips and then back. Drop your right heel down. Okay, so straight away, maybe into your solid star, you're going to pivot your right heel to the left. If you want to do that modified, Side plank variation, you can, you can bend the right leg, or you can shoot the left leg out. You don't have to bring the left leg down as well. Option here to hover the leg, right arm lift if possible. Find that balance, wrap your left bicep forward, use your side body, and then right hand down, cross your left leg over your right. Spin back onto the ball of the right foot. Figure four shape your left leg, so left ankle now over the right thigh, flex your left foot, bend your right knee, begin to walk your hands toward the back of your mat. Okay, so from here again, if you need to adjust the position of your left ankle, you can if you want to stay down, the fingers come out, that's where you feel strong to, or option to come up into Galavasana, or one-legged chair. Feel the opening in the outer edge of the left foot. Now, option here to do what we did the last time, with the left knee bent, as we come into that standing twist, or you can reach down for the outside of your left foot with your right hand, so the pinky to one side, and as you come up, bring the left knee to your chest, left arm back, and then maybe you can extend the left leg straight out. So obviously, again, a lot of hip mobility, a lot of opening in the IT band in the hamstring, so if this is not available, please just keep the left knee bent, and your right hand to the outside of the left knee. Coming back to send your arms overhead, or if your left leg is straight, reach forward, try not to fall, grab the big toe with your pinky fingers, right arm up overhead, or to your right hip. So the left knee is either bent or straight, and then we all bring the left leg out to the left. Hold it here, breathe three, two, one. Bring your right hand to curl the heart. Now I'd like everyone to bend their left knee, bring the left hand to the inside of the left knee, and then you're going to fold forward. Bring that left knee out wide as you fold forward halfway. So bring your torso parallel to the mat. Pull your lower belly in. Breathe. And then slowly come back up. Bring that left knee up into the chest. Arms overhead, inhale. Exhale again. Standing splits, fold it all the way down. Okay, so remember we're incorporating a few different options. From here, if you'd like, again, you can bring your right hand behind your right calf as you fold deeper, right hand behind the ankle. If you're really brave, you might walk the left finger to back in line with the right foot, and you might then try to balance as you fold both hands behind the ankle. You might fall out a few times or not. Okay, and fingertips to mat, look forward. Bend your left knee, bring your left knee in towards your chest. Bend your right knee, and step the left foot forward as you look forward. For your pyramid fold, drop the right heel, left toe points forward. Inhale to lengthen, exhale, fold. Really nice, so again, pivoting that left hip back, right hip forward, root down through the right heel. Imagine an eye on the outside of your right hip, and it's looking towards your left baby toe. Inhale, flat back, look forward. Arda Chandrasana, bring the left fingertips forward, hover your right leg, and try to lift the right leg, maybe lifting the right arm toward the sky this time. Using the outside of your right glutes, 
you want to really play with the pose, make Yana Mudra with your right hand, index finger and thumb together. And maybe you hover your left hand and you make Yana Mudra with your left hand. Engage your core. Maybe you fall out, maybe you need to bring the left hand back down to the mat. Warrior two, left hand down, step the right foot to the back of your mat again. If you need to widen the distance between your feet, do. Inhale all the way up. Sit into the pose. Inhale again, lift your left palm, so reverse your warrior. Inhale, come up warrior two. Straighten your left leg, exhale, inhale again. Exhale, shoot forward and down, Shrikhanasana. Right arm up, right hip back. Root down through the outer edge of your right foot. Okay, and then come all the way back up. Inhale, shoulders over hips. Toes point toward the long side of your mat. Lift up out of the waist. Inhale, exhale, fold it forward and down. Again, options to get the hands to the outside of the calves, ankles, feet. Or if you want, you can bring the palms to the mat this time. If you're quite flexible, you might work on flexibility by bringing the feet closer in toward each other. That's going to make it harder. Or if you want a strength-based pose, maybe you float into headstands, either tripod or your regular dolphin headstand. So hands are shoulder width distance, elbows stack over your um, wrists. And it's okay if your head is um, comfortably reaching the mat with length in your spine, that you'll begin to float all the way up. You can come into any variation. Hug the elbows in, tuck the tailbone, engage the belly, legs strong, and then slowly legs out wide. Maybe flexing the feet as you stroke, slowly use the core to come all the way back down. Inhale, flat back, fingertips to mat, and then walk the hands to the front of your mind. That runner's lunge, stepping it back, inhale, plank. Exhale, lower. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Well done. Step your left leg in, float the right leg, inhale, float the right leg high. Exhale, right knee to the left, tricep, squeeze it across. Inhale, float it all the way back up. Exhale, knee to nose, thigh to belly. Cross right thigh over left. Lift your hips up and back, squeeze your inner thighs together. And then pivot, left heel to the right. Now you can come into this variation of a side plank on your left fingertips, pushing the weight back. Or you can shoot forward into your fall and start. That can be with right foot to the mat. As your left arm lifts, or you can hover the right leg, plugging the right finger bone into the socket for five, four, three, two, one. Right thigh over left, left hand down. Finding this eagle wrap down dog. And then bigger four shape right leg. Slide right ankle over left knee, flex the right foot, walk your hands. Toward the back of your mat. Get yourself there, however slowly or fast, gracefully or not so gracefully. Sit your bum up, lift your chest, and then come into the balance if possible. If not, you can even just come into a regular chair pose if that's better for you. Soften your shoulders, breathing deeply. Flex the right foot. And then same again, options. You can either keep the right knee bent to come up. You can reach down for the right foot with the left hand to the outside of the foot as you come all the way up to standing. So we're twisting right arm back and maybe your right leg forward. Try not to pike the right hip. Try to keep the right hip down in line with the left. Pull your belly up and in away from the right thigh. Breathe three, hold two. One, right hand comes forward either to the inside of the knee or you reach for the big toe, wobble the left knee if you want. Left arm up, and then maybe you bring the right leg out wide with the leg straight or with the leg bent. Breathe three, hold two. Bring your left hand to part of the heart. Everybody bend the right knee, bring the right hand to the inside of the foot or inside of the knee, and bring that right knee out wide as you fold forward. Now this is an option. Chest forward, right knee wide, breathe three, hold, two, use the right foot and the core, one, come to standing, wobble your way back, just, whew, break. 
Try not to shake it so seriously. Arms overhead. Inhale. Exhale. Stabbing splits. Folding forward. Nice and slow. Find the mat with your hands. And then strong fold forward over your standing leg. Again, try to forget about how it looks. If you want to bring the left hand behind the calf, you can. Behind the ankle, if you want to play around with two hands. If you want to mess around, if you want to fall, create that muscle memory. Deepen your practice. And then fingertips to mount. Inhale, a slight length and exhale. Round, squeeze right knee in. Bend your left knee, step your right foot forward. Grounding your left heel, pyramid fold. Okay, why didn't I bring water? Everybody go press pose, get yourself a glass of water. Okay, and come back. So from here, folding over your right leg. Try not to think so much about getting your forehead to the shin, rather your belly, then rib cage, then chest, then brow. So it's like you're sandwiching your torso over your right leg. Grind into the left heel, engage your right quad. And then inhale, ripple length into the spine, bend into the right knee, and arch your rasana. So you're gonna float your left leg away from the mat. You can extend your left arm toward the ceiling this time. If it's okay for your balance, right fingertips to mat, Yama Mudra with your left hand, index, middle, and thumb together. And then maybe Yama Mudra with your right hand. Floating your right arm, finding all of the strength in your right leg, but engaging your entire lower body, hips, pelvic floor, both legs. Warrior two. Okay. So find your way into warrior two on the right. Again, we're gonna have to widen the distance between the feet. Arms wide. Inhale, flip your right hand. Exhale, reverse. Side button stretch. Inhale, lift back up warrior two. Straighten your right leg. Shift it forward and down for Trikonasana. Left arm up, shoulders away from ears. Knit the rib cage in, belly strong. And then slowly strong legs as you come all the way back up. Both feet point toward the long edge of your mat. You can slightly pinch and choke the feet if that feels good for you. Lift up through the lower belly, meet your quads. Inhale, stretch your arms out wide. Exhale, fold it forward and down. So slowly with control, you want to really feel your legs working here. You can, again, work on flexibility here. If you want to um, push yourself a little bit or find your limit, you can bring the feet a little bit closer to work on flexibility. Or you get an option to play with that headstand. You can come into dolphin headstand if you want this time if you found the tripod really easy. Your elbows, your shoulder width. You interlock the fingers. You bring the base of your skull into that space in the hands. And then again, don't crunch into the neck, space in the shoulders in the neck, float the legs all the way up. So again, you can play around with any variation of your headstand, engaging your core, tucking your tailbone, push down through the forearms or the hands, whatever variation you're in, and then slowly legs out wide. Try not to collapse really with control. Legs are strong. Slowly lower all the way down. Fingertips to mat, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, walk your hands to the front of your mat. Right toe points forward. Push down through the palms. Step back. Plank. Inhale, plank. Exhale, lower. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Okay, so, badass, well done. You made it through two out of our three flows. So we get to repeat it again. And this time we're gonna be adding in a little bit more. So that was really actually most of the challenging part. Since we move in a little bit faster this time, and uh, it might be a little bit easier. And we're also gonna be adding in a bit of an arm balance. So flying pigeon, and um, maybe it's something you've done before, maybe it's not. The Galavasana or one-legged chair that we've been practicing is basically the pose, okay, which you're not using, or you're not um, doing, incorporating the um, arm balance. That pose is most of it, so if you're doing that, well done, and stick with that. If that feels already challenging enough, 
You're basically strengthening your arm balance by just staying there. If you force it and try to come into the arm balance and injure yourself or fall flat on your face time and time again, then really I think it's better just to stay where you are and strengthen where you are before you play with that progression. Again, loads of options. And again, we're going to move at our own pace. Leave out or add in wherever you want. Downward facing dog. Spread your fingers wide. Tuck your toes. Lift your hips. Step your right foot in. Inhale. Look left leg to the sky. Exhale. Left knee to right tricep. Shift forward. Inhale. Fold it all the way back up. Exhale. Left knee to nose. Cross the left leg over the right. Lift your hips up and back. One leg down. Dog one. Pull and start, drop your right heel in and straight away if you want. You can hover the left leg, the right arm lifts up. You can extend the right arm over the head if you want. And then cross the left side over the right again, right hand plants. For your four shape, your legs slide the left ankle so that the ankle is over the thigh. Flex the left foot. Walk the hands back. So this is where we're going to incorporate. Some of us are going to stay here with fingertips to mat. Some of us will want to just continue working on their one-legged chair coming up with hands to prayer at the heart. You can stay here if you want with fingers to match, sitting your hips back. If you're trying to come into the arm balance, you hook your left foot around your right tricep, nice and high toward the armpit. Your left knee rests on the back of your left arm, again, toward the armpit, so high in the triceps. You're really hooking that left foot, so it's almost um, hugging the arm. You're gonna find your hands like you'd be coming into your crow, your vakasana, or down dog. Your elbows are hugging in like they're hugging a beach ball. You lean forward, you gaze forward. And then maybe you begin to lift your right heel. You can point the toe or flex the foot. Draw your lower belly in. A slight rounding through your spine. If you can, you can fly and extend your right leg back. And then slowly release back down. If you want to give it a few goes, pause the video and try again. Hands to prayer at the heart with all knee and galavasana. Again, either knee bent or leg straight for the twist. For the standing twist, bring your right hand down, grab the outside of your left foot, and come up to standing. Extend the left leg as you extend your left arm back. Don't worry if the leg isn't straight, it doesn't mean we're less of a yogi. It means you're listening and connecting to where you are. Okay, the opening hip pose. You're gonna bring the left hand forward. Reach for the toe or the knee, and bring the left leg out. So right hand can be to the hip, you can stay here if you want. You can bend the knee again for the fold. So you're gonna bring the hand to prayer and move the left leg straight. If it's straight, the left toe starts to point forward. I'm gonna bring my right arm out wide for balance. Fold forward, breathe three. The left knee can be bent for this two, engage your core one. Slowly come all the way back up. Release, come to center. Left knee in, arms up. Now bring your arms back by your hips. We're going to fold forward as slow as we can. Extend your left leg back. Reach your arms up and back. And as slowly as you can, fold over your standing leg. Maybe this time you do not bring your hands to the mat. And you interlock the hands straight away behind the right calf or ankle for your standing splits. Really working on the balance. Breathe three. Shoulders away from ears. Two. One, fingertips to mat, everyone. Inhale, lengthen slightly. Exhale, knee to nose round. Step the left foot through. Pyramid fold. Drop your right heel. Again, find knocks if you need. Square off your hips. Either staying here, or I think it's flamingo pose. I can't quite remember, but let's call it flamingo pose for now. You're going to extend your fingertips back. So the fingers point back, thumbs point forward. You're gonna um, push the mat away through your fingers. Round to your back and squeeze your belly in. Now push the weight forward into your left foot, almost lean forward, and then hug your right knee into your left knee. Right heel toward the glutes, so you're now balancing on your fingers and your left foot. Engage your core, round your spine, hug your belly in. Three, two, one. Right foot down. Well done, come forward, Ardha Chirasana. Again, if you want, you don't have to use the hands at all. You can straight into the Gyana Mudra with your hands, playing with balance, lower belly up and in, any variation of your Ardha 
Warrior two, bend your left knee. Whew, widen the distance between your feet. I really need that water. Ugh. Okay, arms wide. Inhale, flip your left palm, X, reverse the warrior. Inhale, back up, straighten your left leg, trip and asana, forward and down, right arm to the sky. And this time we're not coming up. I'm gonna get you to bring the right hand down, bend into your left knee, frame your left foot, and spin onto the ball of the back foot. We're gonna play with side plank. So option A is to drop your right heel and step the left foot back halfway, keeping your right hip lifted, left foot grounded, left foot in line with right hip, and left arm lift. Option B, you can step the left foot back fully but stagger it. Option C, left foot stacks on top of right. You'll see I'm not collapsing into my side body. Last option if you want, you can ground into the right hand, interlock your piece fingers to the left big toe and come into a straight leg and open hip position. So drop your right heel, any variation, left knee in toward your side body and then maybe you extend the left arm to, or left leg toward the sky, holding it wherever you are for five, lift your right hip for four, three, two, one, release plank position, inhale plank, exhale to lower, inhale up dog or cobra, exhale downward facing dog. Okay, I know it's very tempting to feel, but we're nearly there. And we're gonna repeat that one last time. On the opposite side, incorporate any of the modifications I've offered, lead in, take out, add on, whatever you want. Okay, so step the left foot in, float the right leg, inhale. Exhale, right knee to nose. We can do it, hug the thigh across the body. Inhale, float the leg all the way up. Exhale, thigh to belly, knee to nose. And then cross the right knee over the left, lift your hips up and back. Full and star option, you're going to you're going to pivot the left heel to the right, and you're gonna extend your right arm or right leg out wide, left arm lift, hold it here. You can also drop the right foot if you need to. Left hand down, cross your right knee over your left, sit your bum back again, figure four, shape your leg. Right ankle over the left, you can bend the left knee as much as you need. And then begin, walk your hands all the way to the back of your mat. Okay, so same options apply again. You're hooking your right foot around your left, and um, tricep this time, your left upper arm. You can stay on your fingertips. You can come up into your Balabasana with hands to prayer, or you can play around with your flying pigeon. So resting your right knee on the back of your right arm, nice and high toward the armpit. Right foot hooks around, left tricep and then lean forward. So palm spread wide, look forward, round your back and slowly hugging the left heel toward the left glute. Sucking your belly in, breathe three, hold two, one, left foot down. Everyone meeting in Galavasana, hands to prayer at the heart. Options with your balancing twist. Either keep the knee bent or reach for the right foot with the left hand. All the way up to standing, shoulders over the hips, right arm back, right leg forward. Keep your gaze fixed. Try to draw your lower belly away from your thigh. Really nice. Try not to pike your right hip up. Keep it down in line with the left. And then slowly come back to center. If you're reaching for the foot, grabbing the big toe with your right piece fingers. Left leg upward by the hip. Right leg straight or bent, and then right leg out wide. So here again, we're going to hold forward with the right leg bent or straight. So as you come forward, if the leg is straight, your right toes are pointing forward now. So a slight internal rotation of the hip. Whoop, I'm going to fall out of it. Hold wherever you are instead of bending the knee to come into this one. Left hand can be at prayer of the heart for two. Breathe one, engaging your right glute, come all the way back up to center. Arms lift, right knee to the chest, and fold it forward. This time, arms back by your hips, and fold as slowly as you can. Use your core strength, slowly, slowly, slowly. And you don't have to bring the hands to the mat, you can interlock the fingers behind the ankle or the calf. Fold energy into the ball of your left foot. 
and go slowly the way over your left thigh, and then fingertips to mat. Look forward slightly, round your spine, hug your right feet, thigh in toward your belly, knees squeeze to touch, and then bend your left knee slightly, step your right foot forward, pyramid fold. Drop your left heel, inhale to find length, square off the hips, exhale, fold. Option stays to stay here or play around with what we think is flamingo. Fingertips back, thumb forward. So you want to reach quite far back with your fingertips. Push into your fingers, round your back, slightly lean the weight forward into right foot, and then hug your left thigh in toward your belly. So your inner knees are touching. Your lower belly is sucking up and in. You're breathing in lightly. Breathe three, two, one, left foot down. Okay. Coming into Ardha Chandrasana. Again, feel free to come into straight away the Yadamudra with your hands. You can float the right arm, left arm to the sky. Any variation, play around with it. If you need blocks, if you need hands, use everything you need. And warrior two, bending into your right leg. Stepping the left foot back, inhale, arms wide. Exhale, reverse the warrior, right arm over the ear. Inhale, lift your back up. Straighten the right leg, exhale, shift forward, trikonasana. Right hand down, left arm up. Okay, and then from there, we're going to simply bring the left hand down to the mat, bending into the right knee, frame your right foot and spin onto the ball of the left foot. Runner's lunge with the legs. And coming into our side plank. Really important, your left hand is underneath the shoulder, that your left bicep is spinning forward, your left hand or left arm is active. Any variation, again, I'm going to play around with that. Lifted legs, dropping the left, heel to the left, the right knee, if you're playing around with this balance, can come in toward your side body. And if you have the flexibility, you might straighten into the leg. Hold three, breathe two, one. Release, plank, inhale, plank. Exhale, slowly lower. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Yippee, we made it. Inhale, deep through your nose. Exhale, open your mouth, let it go. Well done. Okay, from here, drop your knees. Bring your feet out to one side. And sit your bum all the way back. Extend your legs out. We're just going to finish with a gentle twist. Okay. So we're going to bring our right foot in toward us. Step the right foot over your left thigh, flexing your left foot. We're going to be twisting to the right. I'm going to get you to wrap your left arm around your right thigh. So you're really hugging the thigh in toward the belly. Bring your right fingertips behind you. And begin that twist to the right. So you want to keep your shoulders over the hips. You want to lift your lower belly up and in away from the thigh, flexing the left foot, grounding through the right. If you want more, bring the left arm to the outside of the knee, twisting with each exhale. So you want to inhale, lengthen up, lift. Exhale, twist for three. Inhale, lengthen up, lift. Exhale, twist for two. Think about bringing out from the belly button. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, twist one. And back to center. Well done. Release. Right leg forward, left foot in, and step the left foot over the thigh. Wrap your right arm around your left thigh, flex your right foot, and feel that left foot ground deeply. Left fingertips behind you. Pull your belly in away from your thigh as you pull the thigh toward the belly. Inhale, we lengthen up, exhale, we twist. So we're trying to slide the belly almost past the thigh. You're going to, maybe if you need more, bring the right elbow to the outside of the left knee. Use that arm and knee as leverage to deepen the twist. Remember, we inhale, lengthen. Shoulders soft, exhale, twist. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, twist. One more time. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, twist. And our knees back to center. Well done. Extend your legs out in front. We're going to come onto our backs. So scoot your bum forward and roll down into the Oh, so nice, everyone. Well done. Just finishing with a gentle twist. Bring your arms out wide, shins over your knees. Bring both knees to the left. Look to the right. Take one nice, full, deep inhale. One full, deep exhale. 
Back to center, lift the knees up, use your core string, exhale, twist to your right, look to the left. Slowly bring the knees all the way back up. Well done, hug, hug your knees in toward your chest, wrap your arms around your shins, bring your forehead toward your knees, and just give yourself a gentle squeeze, gentle hug. Slowly bring it. So extending your legs, extending your arms. We're just going to take a few breaths together. So just allow your hands to rest on your lower body. Inhale fully into your body for three, two, one. Exhale for three, two, one. Inhale three, two, one. Exhale three, two, one. Last time. Inhale three. Two, one, exhale, three, two, one. You can keep your hands flat on the belly or you can bring your arms wide, palms face up. We're going to drift into our final Shavasana, allowing your body, your mind to bathe in the effects and benefits of your practice. So you have just kicked ass. So take this time just to acknowledge that you have done enough, that you, that the most important part of your practice was simply the journey to your mat by stepping onto your mat. The rest was a bonus. And now you get to experience the full effects. Slowly just giving yourself and your body the time to process for perhaps the only time today just doing nothing, simply being. And don't worry if you find yourself distracted, if you find that, that is difficult for you. Don't worry, yoga is a lifelong journey. You'll get there eventually. Keep your mind on your breath. Feel the full weight of your body and stay here for as long as you would like. Breathing softly in and out through the nose. And you'd like to come back to close our practice together, press, press play again. Now that you've come back, you can start to wiggle your toes, bring movement into the fingers, deepen your breath slightly. Take a nice full deep inhale through the nose and exhale, open your mouth, open your mouth and let it go through the mouth. Roll over onto your right side body into a fetal position, pause here. And then using your left hand to push all the way up to see it. Okay, so stepping your shoulders over your hips, hands to your knees. Allow your eyes to remain closed and just bringing some focus to your breath again, observing the effects of your practice. Thank yourself for coming to your mat today, for dedicating time to your body and to yourself. Bringing your hands to prayer at the heart, connecting in with your breath, with yourself, bowing your chin toward your chest and honoring your practice. A namaste. My lovely yogis. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I realized that my yoga or my YouTube channel is a little bit of a mix of yoga and uh, lifestyle. So um, I'm so grateful for those of you who follow and maybe you are interested in it at all. Maybe you're only doing um, the yoga. Uh, but yoga obviously is what I do for a living. It's what I am most passionate about. So I feel so grateful to be able to have my space here and to be able to invite you into my happy place in sweaty soul in Dublin. So thanks so much for following and thank you so much for dedicating time to yourself today. It's not easy, um, but you will reap so much rewards, I promise. Thank you and namaste.